Call ring them up to the uh, nope. work session. Oh, work, the right, work session is March 21st. Call to order at 7.30 p.m. Can we have roll call, please? Mr. Banta. Dr. Cohen. Here. Mrs. Franco. Mrs. Brackenbush. Here. Mr. Rosenberg. Here. Mr. Santana. Here. Mr. Spindell. Present. Mrs. Wallace. Mr. Barbarulo. Here. New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of the public bodies in which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this Act, the Family Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof distributed to the persons on the approved it's list, protecting public safety and property. The results of these discussions will be made public as soon as possible. Please join me in a flag signal. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, at this time I'm going to uh, turn over the meeting to our superintendent, Mr. Nick Garcia. Good evening, everyone. So, um... <coughs> We know that tonight we're going to be discussing, I'm going to do a presentation on the random drug testing policy, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, and what I would like to do is, I would like to go through my presentation. The board received my presentation already, but for the public and the board again, I'd like to go through my presentation and then at that point open it up if anybody has any questions uh, when we're done so the board can have a discussion. So I'm just going to jump on up there, on here, take my quote here. Mm -hmm. So, um, so how did, uh, how did we get here? Why are we having this conversation? Um, we received a email from a... You guys okay over there? Hang on. Good. Um, we received an email uh, from a parent uh, asking us to consider a policy on random drug testing. Uh, and one of the roles of the Board of Education, one of their most important and crucial roles, is setting board policy. So what we decided to do was to bring it to a work session and say, this was a concern of a parent. Is this a policy that Fairwell would like to discuss, whether they want to adopt it or not? There's a lot of falsehoods, for lack of a better word, of uh, Farallon's doing drug searches, Farallon wants, the Farallon Board of Ed wants a random drug policy, and that's not what happened by any means. We had a, a parent who asked us if we would consider this policy, so we decided to bring it to the work session and say, is this something the board wants to consider? This is not something that says that the board came to us and said, we really want to have a random drug search policy, or a random drug testing policy, or whatever it may be. It was just a concern that somebody brought to us, and we said we would consider it as a board, because this is one of their main functions, is setting policy. That's how we got it. Uh, we, what you'll see in the, in the PowerPoint, um, what I put together for you, is our current policy, what the proposed policy could look like, if it's something that the board says, yeah, we want to see this and move forward with it, uh, a couple of, of other policies that I found along the way, um, as well as some research that I did, some data, some articles, some quotes that are going to be in here, uh, what other Bergen County towns are doing, uh, as well as uh, what other administrators said. Um, I did not put this PowerPoint together in uh, isolation, in a bubble. I spoke with other principals, other superintendents that already have this current policy and picked their brains. So how do you like it? So you'll see a little bit of that in here as well. Uh, and most importantly, what are we doing as a district and what can we do? That's the most important thing. I'm an educator. I'm an educator at heart. I always will be. How do we educate our students to make better choices rather than this be a gotcha game? So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And then last but not least is discussion. So our color policy right now uh, states that we test students if we have suspicion that they may be under influence. 
So if a, I can send it to you if you want. If you want to take pictures, I'll. <laughs> uh, if you want uh, our current policy, if, if, if we ever, you know, I'm not going to read this to you, but if we have suspicion that a student may be under the influence, we would contact the administrator, the nurse, and then that student may go out for testing. That's what our current substance abuse policy. There's nothing random about it. There's no uh, just pulling students down. Uh, it's only if we have reasonable suspicion that they very well may be under the influence. They may smell like something that they may have taken. Eyes may be glassy, sleep in class, and so on and so on. This is mandated, right? Yes. The proposed policy, 2435, this is the exact proposed policy that I was emailing about. The proposed policy is random alcohol and drug testing of students. The court's rule that you cannot, cannot, and our attorneys here, and correct me if I'm wrong, you cannot just randomly test any student in high school. However, if you have students that are participating in extracurricular activities, playing sports, driving to school, parking on campus, or perhaps their parents just decide that I want to consent to this and just put my son or daughter into the pool. But what I found was most districts, have a policy that has A and B here. I don't know why this keeps cutting off there, and I don't know how to move that. But A is elect to participate in co-curricular activities, including athletics, beginning with the participation, their first activity in any school year, uh, parking on campus. And how it works is if the school year starts and you're going to do that, the parent signs a consent. Your name would go into a random generator. And every school district does it differently depending on how they set their policy. Now we can talk about that. If the board says this is something we want to do, then there would be further conversation about what our policy would look like. But I'm going to give you some examples. Some districts test two students a day, 15 students a week, 10 students a month. Every district decides on a different number. They take those students and they may use a random generator in a computer system. And if there's 100 students, for argument's sake, that are part of this playing sports, co-curricular activities, whatever it is, we know more than that, those hundred students would go into it, into the system, and it would shoot out the names, and whatever students came out, if there were two students a day, the top two students would get tested at that point. That's what the policy says for random alcohol and drug testing of students. The next policy, this is where it got a little confusing for me, is also, policy 2435, <coughs> random testing for interscholastic athletic students. Now, what you'll see is, in my research, some of them are 2435, and some of them are 2435.1. 2435.1 may just be random drug testing of students. 2435 usually is interscholastic athletes. So, it says here, that therefore, if a student, it, in accordance with NJSIAA, the governing body of sports, uh, with Executive Order 72, will test a random selection of pupil athletes who have qualified as individuals or as members of a team for NJSIAA sanctioned state championship competitions. So that's if a student makes it to a certain level of playoffs, championships, or whatever. They may test for performance enhancing drugs, steroids, whatever it may be. So there's this policy as well that is also random drug testing of students. But I, I wanted to show you both policies so you knew exactly what I was talking about with random drug testing of students. And when I speak about the data in a little while, you're going to see what I'm talking about because there was um, the first email that I, well, the only email that I received said that 30 other school districts are doing random drug testing. Um, so 30 other school districts, I believe, are, I have to go back. Thirty school districts are doing this random drug testing in the state of New Jersey. And that's what I found from my research, and I'll explain that again a little bit further in a little while. But here, there's more school districts that are doing this and holding their students to a random drug, drug testing if they make it to a certain level of competition. We'll see that. So, uh, here's a slide. So, out of the 75, there's no database. There's no database that says this many students are actually, this many districts are actually uh, implementing or adopting a policy for random drug testing. There was no way for me to call 
and say, hey, how many people are doing this? I sent out a survey. I still haven't received the results, but we had our meeting tonight. So I kind of had to wing it on my own. When I say wing it on my own, what I did was I literally went to all 75 school districts in Bergen County. I went to every website, and I went to every policy, and I checked every policy 2435 to see who had it, and not one district in Bergen County is doing random drug testing of students. Not one. Good. So, good. so the second thing, though, that I did find was <coughs> that, and I had this is where I found that there was two different policies. I dug a little deeper because I did find 2435 kept popping up, but it was for the interscholastic athletics. So there were 25 districts in Bergen County who do have random drug testing only for students who get to that level of competition. So no district in Bergen County. What I did was then I took it a step further. Strauss Espe is who we use, who uh, writes our policies for us. They write our sample policies, and then we take it and we, uh, we tweak it from there. Um, Strauss Espe is a policy writing company uh, out of Tom's River, New Jersey. Um, they write policy for about 485 school districts in the state of New Jersey. There's about 600 and something school districts in New Jersey. I spoke with the owner of that company and said, is there any way you could tell me how many districts have the random drug testing policy? He said, no, I can't because all we do is give you a sample and whether you decide to implement it is up to you or not. But what I could tell you, if off the top of my head, I would guess 24 school districts. So now I had him saying he thinks 24. I have an email that says 30, and I have an article that's right here that's referenced that says 30. So I'm thinking anywhere between 24 and 30 school districts in the state of New Jersey have random drug testing. I went through, uh, I did some research, I went through some articles and some links. I'd be happy to share this with anybody after the meeting. I shared it with the board ahead of time in case they wanted to do their own research, check out the links and things that I found here. But um, I went, some of the articles on here were about Woodbridge, and it wasn't just newspaper articles about the town doing it, there were research articles as well. But a couple that I want to point out was one about Woodbridge. Uh, they were one of the 30, and this was the article that the gentleman referenced when he emailed me uh, about them moving to this policy. Uh, the other one was about Livingston. Livingston gave this uh, serious consideration. Uh, they wind up not moving towards the policy. And the third link is a letter from the ACLU to Livingston saying, we don't think you should move forward with this policy for X, Y, and Z. And they listed all the reasons. Um, the next slide is additional resources as well. Um, and what I will tell you is what I found was that for every nine out of ten articles, the research all supported why you shouldn't go in that direction and do random drug testing and the detrimental factors that go along with it. And, uh, you know, but it, it was overwhelming to see that majority of the articles and the research, and you'll see some of the quotes here that I just highlighted a couple. Um, this policy, when used to screen particular groups, such as students participating in extracurricular activities, may actually increase drug use. Students actively participating in extracurricular activities are less likely to do drugs because they simply do not have as much free time on their hands. A policy that randomly drug tests students involved in extracurricular activities may deter other students from joining these activities and thus give these students more free time in which they might turn to drugs. Studies have been mixed and inconclusive. Some studies show that school districts that employ the strategy do not have lower reports of drug use, and other studies find that there is a link between drug testing and reduced prevalence of drug use. Nonetheless, reports that have found reduced prevalence of drug use have found that students who were drug tested and those who were not reported had equal interest in experimental with drugs in the future. A couple other quotes. The American Academy of Pediatrics released a policy statement on Monday saying it opposes randomly drug testing students because there's not enough evidence to show it's effective and because random drug testing can damage relationships between students and their schools. Sorry, they are. It's also a possible infringement on privacy, the group says. National Institute on Drug Abuse says that because of the conflicting findings on student drug testing, more research is needed, and that drug testing should never be undertaken as a standalone response to a drug problem. And the last quote I really like that I just wanted to add <coughs> there, because it wasn't so much 
a research-based quote, a more practical reality quote about how much money it costs. And you're going to see that. I'm going to break that down for you in a little while as well. $20,000 can do a lot for a typical cash-strapped school district. You can renovate a classroom, hire a part-time teacher's aide, or buy some computers or a whole bunch of textbooks. I thought that was uh, pretty powerful. So, uh, what did other superintendents and building principals say? What was the administrative impact? Um, as I said before, some administrators said they do two a day, uh, 15 a week, 10 a month. I spoke with one superintendent, one business administrator, and one principal in a district that says 10 a month. It's costing them $20,000 a year just to do the testing. And then, they, you know, what they said was, um, what, even when we, and, and they actually said, we don't recommend this. You know, but we, we've already started this, and now it's a practice that we can't stop. Once you start, you can't stop this practice. But they said, you know, even if we catch a student that, that tests positive, then that student may be out of school for two weeks, which then we can't even help them in school and educate them because we're not sure what they're doing when they're out of school. So we may test, catch a student who may be under the influence, and then they're not even in school. So we don't know what they're doing out of school. They could potentially still be using so that was a concern that they had as a district. Um, there is no, uh, there's no tangible way to know if it's helping or not. How do we really know? Did they stop? Did they not stop? Or they, did they stop because we're testing? Did they stop because they got caught? So there's really no way of knowing hard data on how much it really helped or not. Uh, it's very costly. Um, it is a good, good deterrent. Uh, and out of 100 students tested in a school year, two came up positive. So they said they felt like there was a lot of resources going to this, and maybe it wasn't yielding the results, results they thought, maybe in a positive way or a negative way. Maybe it was working, and that's why they were only getting two students, or maybe it wasn't, and they were spending a lot of money for something, and it wasn't working. So there was really just, there was a lot of inconclusive research and evidence and statements um, when I was speaking with other administrators. So what can we do as a school district, and what are we doing? Here are some things that I listed here. Um, we, uh, we can, uh, one of the things that I believe in is really just educating, doing our job to educate our students, but not just our students, our students, our staff, and our parents. We just had a vaping presentation, uh, I believe in the fall, uh, in both middle schools, and then we followed up with a parent night as well. Uh, it was very well received, it was a great presentation, and it's, we said, why can't we do more of those? moving forward. So that's one of our recommendations. In addition, what we have is another guest speaker coming. It's called We Between the Lines, which uh, discusses, obviously, it means, you know, discusses marijuana. Um, will be April 4th. They're coming to do presentations as well to our schools. Um, Fairlawn Rotary is providing us a guest speaker in the spring at the high school on opioid addiction. Um, next year, we're planning on having quarterly guest speakers at least one every market period. Um, and we said, we just don't want it to be a guest speaker to come up and say why you don't do opioids, but we may want it to be even a little more powerful to why I lost my son or daughter to opioid <coughs> and why it hits home. So we want to have the gamut of different types of speakers. We are uh, revisiting our current health curriculum to see and make sure our, dr our, our drugs, for lack of a better word, we're up with the 2019 trends. We talked about our current policy when our current policy was written. Did you think we'd be sitting here talking about vaping and gummies? No, because this was not something that people talked about five years ago or ten years ago. But now we need to stay current and stay with, with the trends that are out there now. Um, so we're looking at our health curriculum and what we're teaching as well. Uh, we have a weekly core meeting. Uh, a core meeting is a multidisciplinary team that comes together. Mr. Gorsi is here, our high school principal, our, our SAC, our, uh, which is our student assistance counselor, our school nurse, child study team, guidance counselors, teachers, it's a team of professionals that come together and they discuss students that they're concerned about and how they can help those students while they're in school and give them resources outside of school. Um, one other thing that I did do that I didn't mention and put in here was when um, this came about and this question came, why don't we look at the random drug testing policy, um, we put a, a committee together. A committee consisted of our whole central office staff, our middle school principals, our high school principals, our middle school and high school student assistants, counselors, and a couple other professionals on there. And we talked about what do we need to do? What do we need to do to better educate our students? 
Or do we all believe this is the answer? Does everybody in this room think we need to go to a random alcohol drug testing and this is what's going to help, our, help us in fair law with our students? And this is what we came up with. How do we better educate our students? How do we take a more proactive approach? How do we take a more preventative approach? How do we take a more educational approach than more of a gotcha game? One of the superintendents I, I left out was said, you know, Nick, we don't want to waste the resources of our administrator, our school nurse, our student assistance counselor, whoever it is, so we contract out the drug testing. I said, what do you mean contract out? He said, well, we have a, a company that we use, and they pull up with like a trailer in front of the school, and then the 10 kids that get picked walk outside, they go into the trailer, and then that's when they have to give their sample. And I said, oh my God. I said, that's exactly what I said. I go, what is this? And it's exactly what I said. I, 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 I can't even imagine how humiliating that could be for a student. So this is not what we want. This is not. We're, this is a start lead program with the Fairlawn Police Department at earlier grades. We've been working very closely with the Fairlawn Police Department. Currently, we offer Fairlawn uh, lead in the sixth grade. Um, in speaking with the chief, um, and the town council just approved as well, that we could offer uh, the lead program in the fourth grade as well as the sixth grade. There's a fourth grade curriculum that goes along with that lead program, and they're willing to send their officers here to start working with our fourth graders as well, so we can teach them at a young age. Uh, working closely with our director of security, our building administrator, the technology department, Fairlawn Police Department, Bergen County Prosecutor's Office for preventative measures. Uh, constantly being up to date with uh, current trends and practices. Um, you know, our, our security, director of security, looking at how we can make sure that we're keeping a close eye on our buildings, what's happening in our buildings as well as outside our buildings, working closely with the Fairlawn Police Department, obviously, for anything punitive that may come up, but really for preventative as well, the LEAD program. Or coming and giving presentations to our students. Bergen County Prosecutor's Office, they're often giving presentations as well. So working closely with them. Um, our technology department, you're going to see here, I'm going to jump down and come back up. We're moving all our analog com cameras to digital cameras. We're starting to relocate our cameras to areas where we may not have a teacher sitting on duty all the time so that we can make sure that our areas are covered and that we can see things when we need to see things from an administrative and security standpoint as well. Um, ensure that secluded areas of the school are locked and checked and, and make sure that our staff knows that when you leave your classroom, lock your classroom. When you leave your classroom, make sure the closets are locked and everything. So we don't want any open areas of a school where a student at the end of the day or, or after school at night, we have a lot of events going on where somebody could go into it and say, hey, this may be a great place to hang out or whatever may go on. So we're making sure that we're being very vigilant in looking at our areas of the school. Uh, we're doing random checks of the bathroom door in a school day. Obviously, this is an area that's very difficult because you can't just put a staff member in the bathroom all day. So we're going we're gonna to make sure that we do random spot checks in the bathrooms all day as well uh, without violating everybody, without violating anybody's privacy by any means. Continue rolling out turnstile technology in the school. What turnstile technology is, it's our student information so software that we use that has all our students' names in it. We just rolled it out in the media center, correct, and the guidance office, correct? Main, main, main office, main office. And, and, and the library. And the library. So what it is, is it kind of looks like this, set up here with a little swipe, a little something where you can swipe your ID. So when a student is coming to the media center, they swipe in so you know what students are in the media center. They swipe out so you know where your students are at all times. What we're doing is now, we're going to be putting those outside every one of our bathrooms. So that when a student's going to the bathroom, they swipe in with their ID, we know who was in the bathroom at what time, and they swipe out. It just gives us another level of security where we know where all our students are at all times. Um, we, I spoke about transitioning school cameras from analog to digital and reassessing the location of our cameras uh, with our director of security and our administration and our technology department so that they're all where we think they should be. And if we need to move them, then we move them. Um, and Taking, this is really important. As I said before, we think now it's time for us to take a look at our current policy. Let's look at our current substance abuse policy and how do we revamp it now that it's 2019. It's been a couple of years and now with the increase in vaping that's out there, 
Um, it's, it's, it's scary. You know, I have children. I get it. So, I mean, I think it's time that, you know, before we jump to a random drug testing, and like I said, this is a board decision, but before we just jump to a random drug testing of students and play the gotcha game, why don't we look at our current substance abuse policy and say, what can we do in our current policy to address some of these newer things that we're seeing out there? Um, and two more, but model intervention similar to positive behavior intervention supports. What can we do so that it's not a punitive, it's not a punitive consequence? What do we do to teach students, catch students doing something good and highlighting them? The characters of Pillar, everything we talk about in Fairlawn, uh, our commitment to the characters of color, how do we not highlight those pieces of our student and all the positive attributes that we see there with positive behavior interventions? Our current policy on code of conduct says that you don't automatically go to negative consequences that we try to implement positive behavior supports already. So why not take it a step further and look at that? And last but not least, uh, there was a municipal alliance uh, meeting this week, and they're looking to partner up with us as well to work on some preventative interventions specifically about vaping. So um, that's where we're at. And I, and I just felt it was, uh, this is a nice quote to end with from Nelson Mandela. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Everything I'm talking about in here, all the recommendations, all the things we're doing or we can do, I feel our job as I started in my art, I'm an educator, let's educate our students, let's educate our staff, Let's educate the community, and let's do that, and let's take a look at our current policy. But with that being said, I'm going to leave it up to the board. Okay. Mike, first of all, yeah, very, very nice presentation, very uh, informative. Um, I, I have to say that when I first heard um, it even mentioned, um, my my feathers went up a little bit, and I'm like, oh, I hope we're not really really looking into this because I could see this being a disaster for Fairlawn. And I I realized from you know all my from my time on the board and my time in Fairlawn that I didn't think that most people in town would be um, would even think uh, this was. Um, that we should even start this. And I, you know, and then Facebook lit up that we were considering this. And I just wanted to say, um, I, don't, I don't know if we were ever really considering it. More so, we needed the information that we needed to have to, uh, to move forward and just to make sure that we're doing everything we can as a district to support our children, to support our families, um, because to me, and I've always said this, the drug problem in this country, in this town, in this state, is the root of just about all the bad things that happen in, this, in, in our um, communities. Um, and we certainly have a responsibility as a board to make sure as much as possible we could uh, that we that we're a supportive organization because we care about our students and we know if there's an incident that um, it affects the whole it, it affects the whole borough it affects the whole county you know there was an unfortunate incident a different type of incident <coughs> at, at, in a town in Bergen County this week, and um, that always affects, and it worries me as an educator, because I can't imagine, I just, I just can't imagine waking up and saying, whoa, this happened, and, and tragedy happens. So I want to thank you, and I want to thank all of the teachers and um, counselors, because we do a lot, and what I always like to hear is every time I hear what we're doing, because last year we had an extensive, last year or the year before, we had an extensive meeting on, um, on uh, uh, opioid abuse and, and that, um, 
I, I really always enjoy, enjoy hearing what we're doing and how we're constantly bringing more programs in and we're constantly supporting our kids with this because no one could say that it doesn't happen in Fairlawn. No one has, sometimes we're accused of that. And I'm sorry for taking so much time, but sometimes I, I, I look, I look on, on posts and stuff and we're accused of, of, of trying to say that, that this doesn't happen in Fairlawn. I don't think anyone here Anyone here, anyone in this borough would say it doesn't happen in Fairlawn because it happens everywhere. This is a national problem. So I'm really happy that we always have moved forward and we've always brought programs in and most of all that we're supportive of the kids and that we're not looking to destroy the kids. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay, so I'll be bold here and say that I think if we were to take a straw poll right now of board members and how they feel about um, going forward with this policy, it would be voted down at this moment. I don't think there's enough support for this policy. So I'm not going to spend time in my comments talking about this specific policy and instead capitalize on the opportunity to talk about all the other things that we could be doing, making, be considering making progress in this area. And I think that this is a great example of how we as a board have an opportunity to even more forcefully use data and evidence to guide our decision making in, in conjunction with our values and what we believe are the values of our community. So the first thing I want to ask is um, if the administration might ever consider conducting a survey of students, especially in the high school, maybe the middle schools, as getting some baseline data on students' attitudes, reported behaviors, their knowledge of um, these issues, such that any new initiatives that we do, we can actually be measuring whether it's having impact on student outcomes. So you re-administer the survey every two years or something like that <coughs> to see if we've been making progress. There's no way to tell if practices are effective, as, as promising as they might seem, without having that kind of um, data available. And another group to potentially consider surveying would also be parents. Um, might have insights as well. On that topic, I'm so glad to see that there's a team, I think you called it the core group, that's meeting weekly yeah, now yeah. to talk about these issues. Always. They're always? They've always, they've, that's been in existence as okay. so far as I was a teacher. Okay, so I wanted to ask if any other stakeholder groups could ever attend those meetings or be part of that group, including parents who might be um, passionate about these issues and want to collaborate and understand with the administration how these things are going to be done. I also wanted to ask if there is a health subject supervisor in our district. There's someone who's responsible for the health curriculum K to 12. Such person exists, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. If that person is part of the core meetings, especially if you're trying to integrate um, these discussions and to really effectively implement them within the time we're already taking to educate um, children about healthy behaviors and these issues, that's one thing. Okay. So then, um, Nick, I just wanted to say I, I understand the intuitive appeal, especially as educators, to say that what we need is better education with this idea like we just need to get the information out there for kids to understand all the negative <coughs> consequences and how to make healthier choices. I think I really want to encourage um, the administration to go even beyond that kind of starting point and really try to get a good handle on the state of the science of what we know what works and doesn't work on the prevention of drug abuse among youth among middle school and adolescents um, and high school. And I wanted to ask if the health subject supervisor in particular can make sure to go to professional development conferences to make sure to get the cutting edge evidence on more specific practices. Because there's been a lot of research that shows that just telling kids that drugs are bad is not effective for changing behavior. Which is great to know, but even better is that we do actually have some um, evidence, it seems like, of more specific pedagogical techniques that actually do seem to change people's behavior. and I hope that there's administrators who are taking advantage of resources to learn about that and infuse them um, beyond these um, kind of community <coughs> events um, or kind of one-off one kind of programs that might have other positive things but might not actually change students' behavior in a way that we all want to see it progress. Um, I also wanted to ask administration to make sure to reflect back on the long-term strategic plan. We do have a category <coughs> around the health and wellness of students 
to see what we already have in there and if we need to update it to reflect some of these developments. And then finally, um, in consideration, just the thought I had about the, the LEAD program and implementing it in an additional grade level raises a broader consideration is that um, <coughs> we now have the socio-emotional learning program from Dr. Elias that we approved as a board last year. We still have the pillars of character. Now we're expanding these. So I just want to reiterate the importance to administration that um, someone is charged with taking a comprehensive view and making sure we're not just piling on a bunch of things that are all kind of dancing around the same program mm -hmm. or same kind of competencies that we want for our students and are really integrating them and being efficient because we know with you know growing attention on we need more time for STEAM, we need more time for this. Students' time, the curricular time, is so precious. Yeah. And I think um, to really have, I just want to encourage the administration to continue to be really thoughtful with any additional pedagogy that gets placed in a program that it's being um, thoughtfully building upon what we already have in place. Our social emotional learning is Sanford Harmony, not Dr. Elias. It was his, he's the researcher who started the program. Sanford, Sanford Harmony. Harmony. He's the, yes. um, he's the professor. Yeah. 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 But we're talking about the same thing. Um, so that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Norris here, uh, thank you for the presentation. It was very informative. Uh, I believe our teachers do an, an amazing job caring for students. Uh, I believe the current policy is um, it's a reasonable policy, and um, I'm, I look forward to any, uh, any necessary updates to bring it up to date. Um, <coughs> I do echo uh, some of the comments of uh, my fellow board member, Emily. Um, many districts do conduct, I don't know if we do, conduct a survey of uh, eighth graders and freshmen about their use of um, an anonymous survey, about their use of, of whether or not they smoke uh, cigarettes or, or use any drugs, um, or the about the consumption of alcohol. And they base that, uh, they use that data to um, uh, create programs uh, in the high school. Uh, I don't know if we do that. Do we do that at the middle school? Sure, right. sure, yeah. um, I also agree that um, the policy 2435 about the random alcohol and drug testing. Um, it is legally problematic, as backed by the uh, by attorney, and I'm not in favor of it. Uh, but I have a question, uh, Mr. Norcia. If we have students that qualify uh, for the uh, state championship, uh, don't we have to uh, abide by the um, by the 2435 uh, policy in regards to interclassic athletic students? Yeah. If it's okay. So we'll have to be part of it. That's not optional. It's, it's really more of a notice. Okay. It's more of a notice. And JSA uh, will test, right? I did read a lot of these articles at home. And, you know, I am a parent of an uh, eight-year-old, you know, and um, when the American um, Academy of Pediatrics uh, issue a policy statement, uh, you know that 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 takes a, a lot of um, a, that has a lot of um, impact uh, in me and, uh, as a parent. Besides the legal, the legal uh, point, um, I believe what the district is doing and what they're proposing uh, is um, is is reasonable. Um, many parents from um, TJ expressed to me last year that the presentation uh, that they had uh, was very effective there. And they actually wanted a, uh, one of the high school to get the same presentation. So, um, you know, uh, I wonder why they, um, why the, the, the lead program uh, will be proposed for fourth grade and not fifth. Because there's a specific curriculum to that grade. Okay. Um, I would like, as a board member, uh, if the district can consider, uh, besides the uh, what it is considering, um, that we make sure 
uh, our children, especially middle school and high school students, are, su are supervised at all times when, they, when they're not in the classroom. And I'm talking about uh, uh, students who may be uh, in areas like the gym, uh, halls, you know, that there's, that there's a, an adult somewhere nearby. So, you know. I'd like to address that. We may have to do the whole budget over because that would be very costly. And I'm not saying it would be facetious or funny, but it's really, it's, it's, it would be near impossible. And that's the challenge. You have a high school with 1,500 students, and you have that many hallways and bathrooms and two middle schools. To have somebody at every given point is the biggest challenge. We're working on something as an administration, and we literally sat around this table two days ago with our team and committee that we put together and said, how can we work through this with the resources we have or what we could look into? But we'll get the answer, but it's really yeah, it's I so, will, I will, it's so difficult to have that many staff members I, I will at there at that point. So we're, we're, we're working through something yeah. with the administration that we think it I was not. I was not, my, my comment was not having an adult at every square footage where a child is. That's not what I meant. I meant that if students are, let's say, um, there should not be students in a classroom without the supervision of an adult. That's what I meant. Or any, you know. Uh, the, the, turns, uh, the turnstile uh, technology, uh, I'm a little concerned about what I heard. Um, would that be? Would that end up being used to, to uh, take attendance in the classroom in the future? Also, we already take attendance in the classroom with with our student information with, software. No, but would that system be used for students to talking. swipe eventually in the We're future? We're not talking about that right now. Okay, right now it's just down the drum. I think the uh, we should, as a board, we should, um, as a board, we should ask the Fairlawn Council. Uh, to take a look at what can they do as a local le legis as local legislators on their side in in their capacity because um, the whole vaping um, the whole vaping thing and how these companies are marketing <coughs> these products with um, these um, uh, flavors that are attractive to, to kids which the the, uh, the um, federal government has um, call for for that to be uh, to continue. Um, yeah. Teachers should be part of the discussion of the uh, any update on the health curriculum, and I I also do support the health supervisor attending um, <coughs> the best practices in this regard. Thank you. Mark, I'll I'll be brief. I uh, am not in favor of random drug testing. I want to thank the administration for being proactive in presenting the items that you presented tonight on the, on the chart. Uh, it is important to me, though, that I feel the board should look into the policy for the interscholastic athletics 2435, because I don't believe our policy currently addresses that. Correct me if I'm, I'm mistaken. Uh, our teams did quite well this year, and I'm hoping in the future that they do even better. So I think there's going to be a, a need for that policy. I also want the administration as well as the community to know that the Caroline Drug Alliance and Substance Abuse has many, many programs that they offer free of charge in the evening for parents as well as students for programs uh, in the school system that we can all take advantage of. They're excellent programs, and if you need any further information on any of them, you can contact Carol Wagner, the Director of Health. She's been in contact with our school on the liaison, and they've repeatedly asked us that more and more of our administration take advantage as well as parents. So please do, if there is a need. Thank you. So the yeah. right Thank you. Yes, I, you had your hand before. I wasn't sure. No, I, I really didn't have my hand. Okay, <coughs> I thought you were saying. Okay.
Thank you. Um, I, I also will be brief. Um, I think the presentation tonight was very informative. I did read um, most of the articles that were, <coughs> were given to us. Um, I absolutely am not in favor of random drug testing in any way, shape, or form. Um, I still am unclear on the sport portion of, of, of the whole thing, because uh, I do know that years ago there was <coughs> testing because my son participated in that and had a medical condition that we had to make sure was in his file so that he did, when he did test positive for things that were not allowed, that he was clear to be able to take to the, to the, to the floor and perform his work. And I'm not sure if, it, if it's gone by the wayside or if it was just, I'm, I'm just not clear because it was, it was uh, 2004 or 5. To my recollection, that's what I just said, Paul. For argument's sake, if your son or daughter or whoever makes it to a state championship, when they get to a certain point of competing with NJSMAA state championship, with or without the policy, they wouldn't be able to compete. I have to that. Am, I, am I accurate? That's, that's accurate. It does. The NJSA performs its own random yes. testing for steroids, for performance enhancing drugs, irrespective of whether we adopt a policy or not. The only purpose of that policy is to put people on notice about it. But it really, whether whether you have it or not, they will conduct the random test. Right. Okay. And also, just to add to that, I think it's part of the we sign up to agree to go into the state because you right. can deny it. If you, as a, a district, say we will participate in state events, you now gave said that we are willing to go to drug testing. Yeah. I, I know that for a fact. Elise, and then I'll Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks. Elise. Um, I just wanted to say that it's amazing to me that. Um, you know, one parent or two parents could have made, um, you know, sent an email or made a comment about this policy, and you know, we're sitting here re-discussing the policy. And I, and I just want to say how amazing I think that is. Is there's so many naysayers out there that think that we don't, um, that we're not responsible, or we're not transparent, or we're not whatever they say that we're not. And um, you know, for us to be sitting here tonight, um, using valuable time to discuss something that we pre-discussed, um, you know, I, I just really find that to be amazing. And I find it to be informative, and I read a lot of the articles and all of that. But I, I wanted to say something about the surveying. There is a national survey that goes to high schools. That's a federal, I believe, that comes from either the state or the federal government. There's, there's definitely it's, it's every few years that they do it, and they come out with, like, what are national norms, and how many kids, how old they were when they tried it, and how much they're using alcohol, and, you know, all the whatever. You know, it's, you know, it's sex, drugs, and rock and roll or whatever. And I know that in the past, our high school, and I don't know if you have to get picked because, you know, the data people all know that it's samples that they use for data, so it doesn't necessarily have to even be our school that, you know, that was chosen. But I know in the past we have, we have been, so I don't know, again, you know, if it's two years or three years, and I know that we participated in that, so we were part of the results. And, um, you know, I, I just think that, um, that, that I just wanted to mention that because I just thought, you know, I don't want people to think that, you know, we, we never have ever asked those questions or, or have no information. So I think there is information that's out there. <coughs> and, I, and again, I, I know that we participated in the gathering of the information. I have a question. Excuse me. That's a question. My question is, and I could be wrong, and it, it could have been a while ago, but wasn't there was a wasn't there a controversy in Ridgewood yeah, I was gonna about? Say, I was gonna speak on yeah. that. Right. Sure. There was uh, <laughs> about ten years ago an anonymous survey sent to all the middle school and high school kids in Ridgewood. There was an uproar. They were at the council meetings. They were at the board offices. They said it was against their children's rights. Everything else, and all they asked them was three questions about drinking, smoking, and sex. That's what they asked, them. and they got answers back, and they weren't happy. So when you're going to do a survey, you got to also think about the parents and things. Um, I am, again, I'll go on record saying, excuse me? There's also a statute, a federal and state statute, that says you essentially have to get parental consent. To exactly. The that's, where they, that's where there was a whole big lawsuit. Um, I am against the, the, the random drug testing policy. I think it's, um, I don't think, you know, you're going to have people picking kids. I think uh, when 
Mr. Garcia and I were talking the other day about and gone discussing this, and he was telling me about the, the truck pulling. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? It's not even that. I think you're going to run into a problem that a child, uh, parents are going to get upset. It's like, well, why was my child picked? Why did you think so? And then there's going to be stuff like that. My child's not blackballed. People looking at my child that they do drugs, and they don't really do drugs and stuff like that. Um, I think our district is doing a lot, and I, our administration does a lot, and we can always do more. But also, just like I always say, education starts at home. It starts at home with this also, okay? The parents need to educate their children and, and get them involved in different things and everything else like that. Um, you're going to have kids that are going to just go off because they're in the wrong crowd and everything else like that. I'm not saying it's correct, but that's what it is. Plus, you got the Internet today. I mean, so things are out there all over the place. Um, but like Elise said, you know what? We took a parent's request. I was copied on that as the board president. Mr. Garcia ran with it, with the administration. They got on it right away. They discussed it and did what they had to do. So we do jump on things as much as possible. And, uh, you know, like I said, I want to thank them again for all the work that they did on it. And, uh, you know, we're going to know uh, any of the other things that were brought up by some of the board members. Uh, Mr. Garcia will be looking into it, the administration. Emily, I'm going to give you like two minutes because yeah, I got to get response. to the public and then I got to keep moving. In the spirit of discussion, um, I just want to respond that you can do surveys in schools, if, like you can get parental consent. If, if the board values that kind of data, there's a way to do it right and there's a way to plan it carefully wait, wait, to really understand it. The second thing I want to say is that um, I am also appreciative of the administration for putting wow. together this information. But I want to say that parents, I've also seen parents email about other topics that could go up for board consideration and never make it to the full board discussion. So there is discretion on the administration's part of what topics get moved forward for being asked and what topics get um, addressed in other ways. So I'm happy this one made it, but I don't, um, I just wanted to put that context from my perspective out there. Yeah. Well, when, when you get a chance or you can sit and talk to me, let me know though so I can get with the administration because I'd like to know this. Not everything has to no, 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 I would like to, I want to know, because I want the administration to make sure they get on it. Look, and you got one minute, that's it. Uh, Very quick. Um, I agree with on. you. Uh, you know, the, uh, the government okay. should not replace the role of the family. Uh, the family comes first. Uh, we already provide, uh, parents already provide consent uh, for the health curriculum every year. So that is, uh, I, I know because, you know, I have to check that box every year uh, for my child in the school system. So um, that's already a uh, practice. Um, the most dangerous hours in the life of a, of a child are between 3 and 6 p.m. Parents are at work. And if the child, uh, especially teens, if they don't have a positive activity, uh, to partake, you know, parents have to make sure that their children are occupied, preoccupied with things, positive activities, uh, okay. and know where they are at all times. All right, thank you. All right, I'm going to open up to the public for any discussion on this particular item. I am going to go back later on to public comments on the agenda, but for this particular one item, I'm just going to give everybody, I'm going to, I'm going to live in you just three minutes. I'm just going to give everybody a second. We've got a lot of <coughs> Just state your sign in and state your name, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity your to. Name? My name is Neha Bakshi. Thank you. And thank you so much for sharing this information. Um, I have an HR background, and in in the course of my career, when developing executive leadership programs and things like that, you focus on. 70-20-10 learning. So only 10% of development when you're changing leadership behavior or approach is actually coursework or presentations and things like that. 20% um, is through other people. And 70% is actually on the job experience. And I would love to learn more about what we have in place, how much involves peer education or mentoring, shadowing with you know older students, with younger students in terms of helping coach them to make the right decisions. And also, obviously, you're not going to know the choice you're going to make until you're in that situation, getting peer pressure. What type of role playing, dr you know, dramatic acting out coaching happens as a part of this curriculum? Um, 
I know that it's been used in other elementary schools as young as kindergarten and first grade <coughs> to coach girls on playground bullying, you know, where girls pretend to make fun of each other's clothes and you practice responding as a leader would. Eye contact, you know, <coughs> don't say that to me, I don't like it, I'm walking away now, that type of stuff. I would love to see some of that incorporated and not just presentations. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, you want to um, teacher, uh, Carolyn High School. Um, I just wanted to talk to um, two items very quickly. First, the idea of a survey um, and surveying the students on whether or not um, they engage in, in different activities. And I have to say that I am not in support of that um, because I know um, a lot of things should be data driven. I don't disagree with that, but I don't think you're really going to get accurate data from, um, I teach ninth graders, um, so I know um, a little bit about them, and especially if you had to get parental consent before they completed a survey, and they knew that their parents consented for them to do the survey, I don't think the students are going to give an honest answer knowing that their parent said, you can do this survey. So I think that, that piece of it, um, well, I do think surveys do have their place you know, in the world with this particular topic, I don't know if you're really going to get real true true answers. Um, and the other thing I just wanted to speak to um, is what Mr. Santana talked about, about um, the time between three and six. Um, and unfortunately, in today's um, world, um, we used to have in the high school, kids were in the high school from three to six. But today, with the safety and the concerns that are out there, they're pushed out of the building. Um, and, and not not in a negative way, but you know, they're they're not supervised. Um, and if we had more opportunities um, for not just activity, you know, I mean, there's a lot of clubs and activities that they can get involved in, but not of the, all of them meet the needs and concerns of the students who are there. Um, not all the kids can make the basketball team. Uh, you know, there there is that empty block of time, and I think that you know there might be something that we can do to. Um, keep the building open for people who have, they don't have a place to go after school except for some place that's an empty place where there is potential <coughs> for um, not doing it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. One second. Go on, just one thing. It's, yes. it's funny though, I have the rec center, or rec center has always been a thing of controversy for years, but wide open and I can tell you there's days I go there and it's packed. Like I'll stop there to do something at three and then at four o'clock and then there's days I go there and there's ten kids there. So it's like, you know, there's one thing that they do have a chance to do. So it's like pick and choose, you know. Like I said, I've been there days it's like mop. It's like the and at the, I mean I've I've done some stuff at the rec center and I find that by the time they get to high school they're like, oh that's a middle school thing. Yeah. But if there's a high school activity, I mean I, I don't know what to do, but I just you know I'll talk to you. Thank you. All right, David Trotter, Sorry. Street. Um, uh, my question, I guess, is um, what are the next steps in terms of the, the what can we do and, and how do you then gauge the progress going forward in terms of accountability? A lot of that are great ideas, but then how do you make sure that they're being implemented? How do you make sure what kind of data you come back with to say that they're being effective or not effective? Well, I mean, two-part question. second part's a little more difficult because it's back to what I was saying before. How's, where's the tangible number to say that you are being effective or you're not being effective? What I can say is that, to answer your first part, is you know we had our meeting, we met several times, we, we had a lot of great dialogue, a lot of great conversation about what we are doing, what we can do, and we said it's gonna be an ongoing basis now to make sure that this is rolled out. And these are things that we are doing, or we continue to do, things that we have been successful, and we've had a lot of positive feedback. So uh, that'll be up to the administration to make sure that this continues to happen, and that these things are implemented. Uh, but the second part of your question, um, you know, we're just going to have to see over time what it looks like with it. You know, I, but I do think a big piece of all of this is the third from the bottom is looking at our current substance abuse policy and tweaking that and updating that. And that sounds like a no-brainer yeah. in terms of just, yeah. just updating For sure. But I, guess, yeah, I guess time will tell. And is this something that 
that you would take charge of, or is there going to be a drug czar, for lack of a better term? Drug czar. I mean, you know, you know what I mean. You mean somebody <laughs> that's going to be in, in charge of the in charge of that of implementing all these things, or is that going to come from you? And, and, you know, it's, it's we have building we have we have building yeah. principles. Uh, there's, there's a lot of people, so I mean, it's going to ultimately it all falls onto me, I guess. So, no, and then our building principles, and then there's there's you know student assistance counselors. So there's a lot of people that are, that'll be involved. But ultimately, yeah, sure, I guess it all falls onto me. But then it would probably go down to the building principles. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Good evening, my name is Parag Bakshi. I think people are seeing what they do. I'm a product manager. So my job is to listen to my customers. And <clears throat> I feel like we all have the same customer here, right? It's the kids, right? And the problem's really clear. Right? It's just how can we maintain a healthy and respect of drugs uh, ecosystem of children, right? And I understand that there's rules in place and policies in place in surveying kids, I get that. But that's just one way to incorporate them. So I'd like for you folks to just help figure out how else we can incorporate those kids, right? We have an idea, maybe before we implement it, ask them about it. Just get the feedback from your own kids, right? And see, is this something that you think would be helpful? Because it could be really costly if it's the wrong move that could be easily prevented. That's all. I'd like to just address that. Um, Please. Thank you. It's, it's very true. And what I will say is, don't have to know why I know that you and I spoke about this uh, yesterday or two days ago, uh, as well as our student assistance counselor, who they go classroom to classroom and they speak without the, and they speak openly about some of these issues that are up there so that there is some honest feedback as well as Mark you and I spoke earlier in the night about municipal alliance and some students that are there who have shared and said these are some of the concerns that are going on so I couldn't agree with you anymore I mean we need ownership from them to what's going on so that we can get to the root of the problem so that we can help so I agree with you. Thank you. Just to add to that they're the ones that are going to tell us what's going on because again we can't have eyes everywhere we've had people send emails about like Mr. Garcia was saying have people in the bathrooms you can't station somebody in the bathroom you're going to have yeah. bigger problems number one but the kids come to the, to, to the administrators and say listen there's a group of kids that they're constantly going in the bathroom at two o'clock or doing something like that they're going to jump on that and they're going to station somebody outside there and say all right okay now but like you said with the swipe card that's a good idea because now we're going to know where you are at certain times so we look at it so yeah. But yeah, and also we have a student dialogue committee, which is great. Cause they, yeah. they bring a lot of stuff to us. I do recognize that a lot of these yeah. solutions here, you know, there's like a thousand paper cuts in this problem, right? You can see the progress that you're making. Uh, I guess <coughs> my only concern is that for the overarching success of any program, there's got to be ownership from the people that you want to change the behavior of. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. That's Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Roy Gal. Um, I have two kids in my Um About the turnstile technology, kids will find a way, they'll swipe cards, someone will give the other kids card. I don't know how technology will help you with finding each and every child, but I think technology might be able to help you if you maybe install um, um, detectors or uh, smoke detectors, very uh, efficient and something that is uh, um, you know, electronic. There's, there has to be a way to find out, and something that will beep if, if it encounters any smoke. Um, and also, in our community in general, we, the police officers, there are our peers. And same for in, in the army, there's uh, military police. Something that we need to maybe have some, the kids, because the kids are always over there. You're saying we don't have eyes everywhere. Kids do have eyes everywhere, so if we can create some sort of uh, <coughs> I don't know whatever you want to call it, so the kids will be our eyes if they want to make sure that their school is safer and with no drugs. 
we can find a way and not create these you know, kids that will be targets, of course, but have them somehow enforce and come and tell us, either the parents, or have some sort of a forum where they can uh, inform the administration about it. We, we can solve it. There's tons of good kids that don't want the drugs in school. I've been hearing from a lot of other parents about kids telling them that kids are vaping in the high school bathrooms and no one's doing anything about it. Maybe they don't have a forum to actually tell the parents or tell the administration or the teachers. Right, so I don't right, know. Right, That's right, not right. My, my kids. I know, are, but I'm just saying know. is that when people make comments like that, and like I agree with you, and I just stated that the kids are our eyes because they're in there. But if they see somebody doing something that they don't believe in, and then they can do it anonymously and say, hey, Mr. Gorski, if it's in high school, can I speak to you privately and go in and explain something to him? They have to say it to the yeah, principal, and say, it's not anonymously. If you have a, a well, what, way, how do you want them to say it, though? I don't understand we'll that. We'll figure out a way. Maybe no, there's a box somewhere people can write something. So um, I just, I just like to address the first part of your question. We did look into the machines. Uh, what we found were they were very costly and not effective. And we spoke with other administrators that implemented them, and they said that they really weren't working well, they were really costly, they really weren't picking up the smoke, and plus a lot of things that are out there nowadays are smokeless. So it's, it's you know, we did, we did do a little research on that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate everybody's input. And we wrote the notes down, and uh, we're moving on to there. All right, so the next thing we have on the agenda is policies. Turn it over to Lisa. Uh, we'll go over the policy. would you go over the policies, please? Sure. Um, there was a synopsis that followed to the board members, so you yes. do have them. But the first one is the 2422 Health and Phys Ed. Um, basically, there's just a few changes. They changed core curriculum content standards to the New Jersey Student Learning Standards. Um, they remove some details from the policy that are no longer necessary due to the learning standards. Um, they put in there that their school districts are required to provide 20 minutes, a minimum, sorry, of 20 minutes to uh, K through 5. And um, the last thing they did is they <coughs> put in there about um, a piece of the curriculum for middle school for things that are very um, prevalent right now, social, emotional, legal consequences, okay, and part of the curriculum. So, <coughs> are there any questions from... Are any board members have any questions? It's a mandated policy, which is some changes. Anybody have any questions? Um, no. I just, I Emily, go first. Then. Oh, there's um, policy <coughs> 10. That's the next one. That's the next oh, one. Okay. Yeah, on this one. No I'm just very concerned about these 20 minutes a day recess time. There is so much in the curriculum now that something's going to be needed to be taken away. Um, do we currently have it, actually? You have the 20 minutes so, there? Yes, yeah, so our elementary schools have an hour for lunch, so they're eating for 30 minutes, and we recess for 20 minutes. Okay. So we are in compliance already. Okay. Yes, we're good. All right, so we're in agreement to move it. Okay. First reading. No problem? Yep. Okay. You all. No problem. Next, thank you. Okay. The educational program evaluation. Um, basically, this was updates to the QSAC requirements mm -hmm. about monitoring student progress um, and from the effectiveness of our programs, initiatives, and strategies. Um, and what the, the new policy basically says is that you need to have multiple sources of data to monitor the student progress. So that's, that's the primary change that they recommend. Did we just do that recently? Yes. Last year, we yes. updated all of it. But the policy is not recommended. No, I know. I'm just saying, but we've already done it. I, I yes. already sent yes. an email out about how much it was done. Any questions? Emily? Um, I just wanted to ask how that policy is being implemented to make sure that students are being evaluated in at least two ways, right? Would you like to answer that? Sure. Um, I mean, there are multiple sources of data, whether it's standardized test scores, which are multiple. We do many, many benchmark assessments throughout the year. Um, we get teacher feedback. We have faculty department meetings. On, we have four meetings a month, um, where the primary focus of those meetings is really TV and feedback. And, 
so there's, there's multiple measures across the whole of our curriculum, and those are subject supervisors that are in charge. So it's evaluating our programs, not evaluating our students. That's what the policy is saying. Well, the effectiveness of programs is also based on student progress and student achievement. Okay. Yes. Anybody else have any questions? Board? Okay. What was that? Got it. Um, yes, I have. 4219. Um, the, this policy has been updated. Again, another mandated policy. It's been updated to reflect changes that were made in the federal regulations. Um, I will say that there's two things that the district is doing currently that um, we have to tweak on this policy, and that is that we do do the uh, drug and alcohol testing, you know, the physicals for our drivers annually instead of every other year, which is what is recommended in the federal guidelines. And um, one thing that our director of transportation did ask is that we do it, uh, the, the physicals, the annual physicals, 60 days before the beginning of the school year instead of 90, which is what the federal guidelines ask for. So we're making it a little bit more strict. So we're yeah. making it actually strict, more strict. Yes. Yeah, which that's why I read it and I was happy to see that. So. Yeah. Uh, anybody have any questions on this policy? Seeing none. We're going to move it along. Okay. And the last one is administering an opioid antidote, which um, basically the requirement is that in this high school, grades 9 through 12, must have the opioid antidote um, under standing order. It has to be readily available. And we do have that. I have double checked with the principal and the nurses. We have it. Um, <coughs> there are a few things in here that the board can consider, and that is, you know, if you want to extend it to grades K through 8 also. Um, and if you want to have something like this available at uh, functions that are off the school grounds. So that's up to the board. It's not recommended in policy. Any questions or comments on this? <coughs> I don't, I don't see having it off, off the, away from the school, and, um, and I, I'm, I don't see it having it in the lower levels either. That's just my, at least. So I say a lot of the off-school functions, like uh, field events, there's an ambulance there, and they have it, so mm -hmm. that that we wouldn't need that. Yeah, the exactly. That. That's true, a lot of the sporting yeah. events. They, they, they all have it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, there's just one other thing that actually encompasses all the following seven policies. It's one change. They actually changed the electronic violence and vandalism reporting system and the HIV um, reporting system to now be called the student safety data system. So in all seven of these policies, that is the change. So I just think you need to know that. They have to be put on. They're all mandated. Okay, so, and then, so the only thing that's saved now is called the Student Safety Data, data system. system. Okay. Yeah. You know, they do this periodically. I, 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 I know. It, it, like the kill tree. This, this, <laughs> this, this, no, it's, it's all, <laughs> trust me, I know it's by code sometimes. No, exactly. One yeah. word I got to change. Anybody have a comment or a question? Elise. Okay. So I just wanted to go back to the one that talks about the health and physical education. And um, I was just doing the math because, you know, we have the early morning. Um, <laughs> like bio uh, for the kids that missed the second mm -hmm. gym or whatever. And um, just doing the math, and I, I just think we should revisit this. If it's 150 minutes, and we currently have, it's like 225. So even if you take off the 10 minutes a day for changing five and five, right, it comes out to 175 minutes, which puts them 25 minutes over. So in a matter of, you know, I don't know, one walking period, they basically yeah. have covered the extra. So they should have to come in early for the whole year to do the gym thing. And I know we've addressed this many times over the years, but it's never been as clear as, you know, in the policy now it says two and a half. Are you talking about high school? I'm talking about high school the kids that do double labs have to come in for an early gym, like for the whole year. The 150 minutes, it helps to visit. Right. Per week. Right. It's, yeah. it's, like, it's 150 right. minutes, and we actually give 225, but if you take off five minutes, from the beginning of the period and the end of the period for dressing, it's still 175 we'll minutes, which is 25 it's minutes over what is required. And so for those students, it might be, even if it's the fourth marking period that they don't have to come in, um, you know, to do the early morning stuff, like, you know, if there's some way to remediate that, I think it's about time. Yeah. 
September having um, wireless access in every part of the building um, with the new that those of them right mm -hmm. that, the one of them mm -hmm. um, with those uh, access points in all of the building and um, the one-to-one -one initiative obviously being <coughs> uh, ninth and tenth uh, ninth and tenth grade for the reasons that we gave at the budget meeting which is mainly that <coughs> there is a lot of overlap between freshman and sophomore classes, so that way that could encompass them. And um, let me just make sure I didn't miss, you know, a, a lot of the goals that we've talked about already, but um, reallocation of, techno of our technology department and making it more toward the education end as opposed to the um, pure IT end. So, um, and I will, I'll send that out to everyone as well. Thank you, Mike. Ms. Emily. Um, so I'm reporting as the liaison to the community school that had its first quarterly meeting um, and the plans to meet again in May. And the one point of interest to report to the board was there was quite a bit of discussion around how information about the community school's offerings are getting out to the broader community, including parents with kids in the district, as well as other residents um, in Caramelon and beyond. And there was a very interesting conversation about how we're kind of in this in-between phase where not, not everybody uses Facebook or email, but not everybody uses print media, so you kind of have to do everything to um, appeal to the different ways that people prefer to get their information, which costs money um, when you have to do things lots of different ways, but there was discussion on the general feeling that um, not having the printed out catalog of the community school's offerings this last time we had the opportunity to so was a real loss a lot of the members felt, like we were really missing something, especially when residents of Fairlawn are getting the printed out categories by, uh, catalogs by mail from um, Glenrock and Tramis, and yet we don't have a printed out catalog for our own Fairlawn community school. And there was a sense that administration was going to look into a way of trying to bring down some of those cost estimates and um, reinstating the, the direct mailing of the community school catalog to all Fairmont residents in the future, in addition to continuing to keep up um, a more active presence on um, Facebook ads as a new strategy for um, getting information out about community school opportunities. <coughs> Thank you. Actually, I actually just wanted to I get it from Saddlebrook, too. Oh, I, get it from, I get it from like three towns. You know, so, <laughs> so I can go anywhere I want. So thank you. Good report. Very good report. Anybody else have any other committee reports? Okay. Um, yes. I, mean, I have some questions to the committee chairs. I mean, right, well, okay. I know you went very quick, but 
Uh, so I, well, we just we're gonna we can ask. Uh, who do you want to ask first, Mike? Uh, Mike. Um, okay. Gonna, what will actually be accomplished next year with the future ready schools by June? What you yeah. the presentations? I'm gonna send you the presentation. Okay. <coughs> Uh, it's, all, it's all broken down into presentations. Okay. Is it possible if we could, if the um, um, curriculum committee can um, give, give the board a, a report, um, you know, whenever it's possible? Um, sort of like I don't know if you, I don't want to call it a checklist, but from the technology audit, uh, what is what is left to do from the technology? from the technology or what we have addressed it. So I, think that, I think that that would have to come from the ministry. From the ministry. Okay. If, if that's possible, I would like to see that. Um, in terms of the uh, community school, you know, we are, I also get this, this catalog from all these different towns, you know, and that's, uh, that's a symptom of uh, enrollment decline, you know. So, as a board member, I would like to see, uh, if possible, the enrollments for our community school for the past five years. I would like to request that information, if possible, Mr. Morrison. I would like to see the enrollment for the classes uh, for the last five years, uh, so I can have a better understanding of, um, you know, the interest in the community to what we, 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 we are offering now and what we have offered for the past five years. Um, I just like to piggyback on that. And I'm not making any judgment, but I would like to see the data. No, that's fine. I think it's also important for all board members to understand the the, the <coughs> procedure the community school uses for deciding, like, if you, in terms of interpreting enrollment numbers, also knowing, <coughs> like, enrollment was low. If, enrollment, if a, if a course looks like it has low enrollment, I think it would be you know, possible that some people would interpret like that's not a good use of resources if there's not a lot of people in this course. But there are procedures in place around the cost formula yes. for classes that I think is a really important <coughs> piece of information yes. before interpreting what low enrollment means in terms of implications for whether that's a good use of resources or not. So in that communication, I would just clarify that aspect. And I learned about that by going to the latest community school meeting. I wouldn't have known that otherwise. So I think that's something the whole board the benefit from understanding. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to uh, open the meetings of public. Any questions on the agenda? Or I read the agenda? Does anybody have any questions? Please state your name. State your name. State your name. <laughs> if you can, just please tell us a page number. I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, Dawn Ebner. Um, and I'm going to jump to page number three regarding the policies. Yeah. <coughs> actually, um, and my question um, or comment, I actually have two items. One referring to the policy information. Um, it's uh, regarding the revised policy that it's 150 minutes, and that that cannot in include the recess time. Um, I am not sure if we are currently meeting 150 minutes in addition to recess between uh, physical education and health because I believe it's a 35 minute period um, to get two of those a week plus one uh, lesson in health. So um, unless there's something that I'm unaware of, um, without the recess time, um, I don't think that they are meeting that. Okay. Well, so would not be meeting that requirement. So I would suggest that when you're bringing up one of us talk to the supervisor of that and Mr. Tina. I'm just, yeah, moving forward for next year. We have to address that for would you like to say that? We, we have a um, homework period right before lunch every day where we do social, emotional, learning, and health topics, and that's every day out of the week. Okay. So that gets added on to it as well. Mm -hmm. And that's new this year, that, that piece, mm -hmm. that's where it is with the new schedule. Okay. Okay, and then um, my other one is, uh, at this point, just a comment back um, to what um, Ms. Frankel said regarding the um, AM physical education. And I know that this is a uh, topic that comes up quite often, and it is something that I have spoken about as well, um, that I do, um, to a certain extent, agree that AM physical education is not, even though I teach it, um, not necessarily the place for that to be happening. 
but um, the students who are taking AM physical education, um, they only have three days per week of regular classroom time, which is actually 135 minutes from start to finish. Um, so those people are not meeting the 150 minute requirement. Therefore, the reason that they have the um, uh, AM physical education and um, in the um, reading of the uh, information um, it is 150 minutes per week. It is not an average um, of the minutes over the course of the year. So, um, um, so that's, you know, I, like I said, if we can find another way to work out the schedule where they don't have to have AM physical education and meet the 150 minutes a week, I am more than in support of that because I think being uh, pulled out of uh, their class, um, their regular physical education class twice a week, puts a burden on the students. Um, I mean, the teachers certainly, but also on the students to try to, um, you know, get whatever, especially when they're in the health section, to get whatever materials that they had missed during that period of time. I will say this is that I, I would assume, and Dr. Lacatina, our administration and our health supervisors and our phys ed teachers will all get together and make sure we're all on the same page because we that's what we do here. Yes. All right. Thank you. But thank you for bringing that up. Yep. Anybody else? Anything on the public agenda? Um, on the agenda from the public? Any comments? Oh, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, it's you a new, hit your quota for the night. I know, I know. <laughs> well, it's because of the new the, the new way they're do, we're doing this. So that's I know. I gotta get used to it. Yeah, we're looking at it. We're, we're, um, right we're on page. I'm not sure we're going to hear about this in a moment, but on page nine, okay. um, S one, uh, the retirement of um, Steve okay. Montadori, okay. and um, I just wanted to congratulate um, Steve on his retirement and wish him the best of luck. Um, uh, as the, the uh, president, I um, would like to wish him the best of luck, but also um, I have to say um, he's right next door to the gym uh, where his location is. So um, the kids are um, very much um, uh, that I see um, who are uh, reaching out to uh, Steve and getting involved in his class are very involved in class, and the projects they come out with um, are just truly fantastic. So um, I'd like to congratulate him, but also um, give him accolades for all the stuff that his uh, students have have done and, and the report that you know, the positive report that I have seen that he has students. So thank, thank you. you. Sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anything else? Not here. Anybody else? I don't know yet. We've <laughs> 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 one. Perfect. Okay. All right. Seeing that, we're going to go to the agenda. Okay. Um, following items for action. So G1 approval of minutes so the work session executive closed session and executive closed session minutes regular order. Order. Oh, order. I'm sorry I'm sorry right. Does the board have questions no, the board have any questions I apologize okay. I made a mistake relax okay. I know it's not <coughs> anybody on the board have a comment on the agenda okay. so I um I just wanted to ask, I'm going to comment, I'm going to ask, I just can't decide if, if, if these are things I should say now with the work for saying, or if they're things that are better placed at the meeting, because we can still comment on agenda meetings at the regularly scheduled mm -hmm. business meetings. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess my only question, and it's my true question in advance, is the, um, on page 25, the approval of special situation busing. Um, it says cost is TBD. I just want to ask, are those cost figures going to be provided in advance of when we vote on this? And um, what will be given right now? So what we are going to try to do, if possible, is to get the finance committee together at this meeting just to have a conversation about that and then update the board well ahead of time of next Thursday so you'll know what exactly what it is before it goes on. Okay. Yeah, we want to have a conversation. We want to go through the committee first. We're going to try to have a conversation okay. after, and then you will go. Okay. Um, I'll just ask for the finance committee to be able to say what they are recommending to the full board, as well as their rationale for it. I, it would be helpful. Okay. Um, okay. And I'm going to say the rest of the comments first. Thank you. Mike, you're doing it? No, I just thought as a point of water that this was the meeting we were going to say our comments on yeah. so that so that we could vote on it and think about it 
next week. Well, we're not going to give information on that, so we will try to No, I, no, no, I don't mean that. I mean, if there's other comments about yes. other other agenda items, but right. we were trying to do, that was the whole point of having the work session. So I don't know if it's commentary or questions. I'm, yeah, I'm, but I'm saying if you have okay. those, if you have those questions, right, other board members might think about it. Right now, we're gonna we're gonna just she questions on this agenda. Yeah. Right. Okay. No, that's okay. Right. Other okay. Well, so I guess a, a commentary. This is a longer range consideration for the board, but looking at the information <coughs> on this um, in this packet for next week, I'm continuously alarmed at the number of suspensions, especially in our middle schools. I've commented on this at least twice before. I might hear a little bit on the board. Um, there were nine middle <coughs> school suspensions at Tom Stevenson, three at Memorial, and one in school suspension at our elementary school. And I, I, I mean, is this something that the education committee can talk about? I feel like this is an area. I know we have a positive behavioral reinforcements, and there's a long list of practices. But as a board, I would like more information on how we're monitoring the progress of these initiatives and how we're considering more contemporary approaches, like things about restorative justice approaches, or mindfulness as not just like a mental health initiative, but mindfulness is part of how we respond to student conduct. Okay. I, I can speak to you about how all of you want to You said something that that's, can't be said in public, but you got a lot of things you want to do. Okay? But I understand. I hear what you're saying. But I would like to... To be updated. Okay. Okay. I will update the whole board. Yeah, no, no, I want to make it. Okay, wait a second. One second. I'm yeah. still going. Do you have any other questions on the agenda? I'd just like to officially raise the topic for consideration by the education committee. On what? Uh, suspensions? Uh, looking at what are students doing during suspension time? Is it effective response to the patterns we're seeing? Are, are we tracking? rates of suspension per school over time, are they getting better, are they getting worse, are they staying the same? Those are the kind of I questions I'd like to see. Okay, okay can I, can I, I don't think it belongs at an education meeting, and it's, there's, there's a, we have a whole conduct, um, a code of conduct that the kids have to follow, and in the code of conduct, they, there's certain offenses that warrant suspensions, and Kids in middle school and high school, especially, are going to. I'm in an environment every day. They're going to make okay. bad choices and stuff. And no. and I think the administration really. Has I understand. To I, I I know what you're saying, and I just to, to go there. there. This is an issue that's probably not the education. We have a code of conduct, and I will discuss with Mr. Norcia, and I will get back. He's going to form somebody. Uh, you got the board on other stuff that we can't bring to public right now. I will bring. I will get more information about it. We'll get back to you by next week. So that's from the Okay. Is that, is that fair enough? Okay. Uh, in, in regards to this matter, yes. I just I would like to know what kind of positive improvement programs we have. I had emailed it to, to the whole board, so they had a whole list of all of them. I could, I'll Address, resend it to addressing the these specific. I can't speak about these. No, no, specific. not these specific suspensions, but with the code of con conduct. I will, I mean, I will resend it to the whole board. Sorry. I sent it. I will resend it again. Positive, a list of all the positive behavior and prevention supports that we have. You have another question? Absolutely. I'll okay. I want questions. That's what I want. Questions on the agenda, not like, questions. You have a question? Welcome to Yes. Okay. I may. Um, can we uh, maybe, you know, have, uh, check uh, with someone before this, but um, I don't know, <coughs> but can we know uh, the position title uh, for those uh, resignations on B2B, page 17? Are you allowed to know the position title for the resignation? We changed it. 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 Private, private. I would like to go private. Any other questions on board? Okay. All right. So I now go to the agenda. Okay.
Okay, that's it. I'm saying we're done with the agenda. No other questions? Okay. We're done. Meeting meeting. All right, so we have any other me new meeting dates? Anybody have any new meeting dates? No one. No one. We've got a finance committee meeting right after this meeting. So don't wait. We have no closed session. Lovely. Uh, any other new meeting dates? We need an education. No closed session tonight. We need a finance, we need an education. Hold on one second. No, I don't care. I'm saying April's really talking to me. Just let you know. Is that our meeting? of 
continued redevelopment um, in Fairlawn in our future. For example, by the Radburn train station, the popularly known as Deals um, property is likely to be, you know, within the next five years as a mixed residential uh, property with businesses on the bottom and apartment buildings on top. And we really need to get ahead of the eight ball on giving um, council leaders who actually we're make already, decisions. We already have somebody on the council. We need to be feeding them information from us as a we, board we are. on how many students are coming from apartments and multiple. I already spoke with, with our, our administration about compiling and starting to look at those numbers. Okay, and as a board member, I'd like to see them. And I, I, yeah, as, as soon as possible. Um, okay, well, so. That's, that's, a big, that's a big thing, so they'll get to it as soon as they That's, that's a big thing to do for okay. every apartment. But yes, I, I'm feeling some urgency. No, I. I Okay, so I'd also like to talk about um, some board communication issues. So um, one is, I know we had kind of discussed our board seating, which sounds ridiculous, but um, it does something that is, continues to be on my mind, the fact that um, we're split by gender, which wasn't intentional, but the fact that women have their backs to the camera, literally, backs to the camera at every meeting, and if it doesn't matter to other people, then there shouldn't be any issue with us just rotating some <coughs> every month, or some kind of reasonable solution. If anybody on that side doesn't care and want to switch with me, if I'm the one who's going to I'll switch with you. 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 Okay. I'm going to switch with you. Okay. Do you mind switching? Yeah. I brought this up uh, uh, last month, and everybody, everybody was like, "No, no, 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 no." So if you want to switch, that's fine. You do it. Uh, that doesn't bother me. I don't want to. I don't want to rotate because that's a, that's no. What you want to put that? Yeah. Mr. President, I volunteered to switch my seat okay. with Emily. Okay. Okay. Right. Have the what, camera. What else? Um, I would like to switch with Mr. Gorski. <laughs> <laughs> Legislative stuff should be at the work session. You, you 
get the legislative stuff, I think, waiting for uh, doing it at a, um, at a retreat is less, um, uh, I use it because I, I, I don't like, I, I love this word, less, trans, less transparent at a retreat, more very appropriate, I think, at a, at a work session. If part of your report as being the legislative um, person. Um, I think the um, I think it's a good idea to look at the numbers of of the different residents, the different um, multifamily residents. I will say that there's a there's a couple issues because in Farallon, the multi where they built in the last ten years, each area is kind of unique, so it's not like the same, because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Nick, maybe you have an answer or if you get the answer, the promenade in particular doesn't have that many kids at all coming to the school. Correct. Doesn't have that many kids at all coming to the school, so it's yeah. not a good, it might not be a good indication, and obviously in the next week we have to wait to see what moves into Rabbit Crossing. Oh, no. So, I, and, and as far as the, um, the uh, Dollar Tree, I like to call it Dollar Tree because it's not deal, it hasn't been deals for a long time. That is a long time off. So I'm not saying that we don't need to look at it um, because even if they do what they want, even if the planning board does what it wants to do, um, it's going to take years. It's going to certainly go to court at some point. And then the planning and then the building, and it's going to take I can't see that thing changing for 10 years. So the only thing I'm saying is, I don't see the urgency. I see the need for it. I don't see it as, a, as something that needs to be done tomorrow, but it does need to be put, obviously. We're, and I think that you feel, I think that, that they, they do study those things. We are starting to compile a running list, as of yesterday, of anyone who lives in anything above a two-family house so that we can keep data on what is coming into Maryland. Perfect. And I think, so, I think it needs to be right. done over time. Mm -hmm. Are you done, Mike? Um, I just wanted I, I don't care where I sit, so. so. Um, and I just, I'm just trying to, trying to remember. Well, oh, as far as the school, the, the school testing results and the school rating, we were told by Ron that, that, that they're working on it. And those school ratings, from what I understand in my research, they're very complicated, and it takes time to go into it. And, and I, know, I, I know from past years, from past practice, that our administration does go right down to the thing. So, so I'm, I'm, I believe Ron when he says we're going to have a meeting on that. We're going to have a whole report on it. We're working, we're working. Okay. 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 We have this town, okay? Uh, on top of that, the overdevelopment that we have had uh, in the last few years, you know, um, some of us are going to be in Fairlawn for the next 40, 50 years, you know? So we're looking at this uh, through our lenses, you know, and this is, this is it, it may not be urgent to some of you, but it's, it, 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 could, it could potentially be urgent to some of us. So I think uh, that is, it will be um, due to the fact that uh, we are working over capacity, uh, our, our, our schools are over capacity. Okay. Uh, I think it will be uh, uh, not unreasonable that we take a position as a board. I understand Mr. Norcia is doing uh, all he can, you know, working hand in hand with uh, uh, the municipality, with the borough. But I think we as a board need to take a position, a formal position, and send that communication to the governing uh, body 
uh, at the council and tell them that we don't have we don't have the room for for more uh, development. Uh, although uh, some of these some of the development do not have uh, the children that they could potentially have, we don't know if two three years from now new families move into those uh, well, development and we have more. We've so, already we've got just let me just answer that. We have spoken to the board, uh, the council, and we've also spoken about having a rep on the planning board or the zoning board so that we can keep track of what's going on. And we've also spoke to, uh, we're through shared services, uh, with Mr. Van Koenigen and the mayor about keeping us informed of what's possibly going on. We already know half the things that are, po are coming in over the next couple of years, and uh, none of them are, there's one project that's affecting, affecting schools, the rest are low housing and senior citizens. So we are, have already stated from the board the last couple of years before you're on, just to let you know, that we are against this. And, you know, because it's always brought up about the Radburn thing and everything else, and that was a lawsuit for seven years, and they lost, and that's it. So it's here. But we are. And also, we are all in urgency. We, are, we Every day, we every member of the board looks at this as an urgency of where we're at. And then we still get hammered that we're, we don't have enough room, but we're working on it. So go ahead. And just to... Uh, so go ahead. Just to finish, um, no you know, the, uh, making the, the minutes a little more specific, I, I don't have a problem with that, but I would have a problem if that would cost more money. Like if that would add another uh, uh, clerk to, to type more minutes and, and you know, because um, if it's going to cost more money, if it's going to add more personnel, I would not be in favor of it. Um, but, um, in regards to the, uh, the, the school performance presentation, I am looking forward. I am looking forward. Uh, you know, my personal goal is that all of our schools become the Blue Ribbon School. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm looking forward. I will say this about the school performance report because everybody keeps bringing it up. Not everybody, but it keeps coming up. And I know that Ron, as board president, emailed the board and said that we will be giving some type of presentation in the near future. What I will not be presenting is individual schools. We are going to present on the district, on the district performance report, and what we're doing as a district moving forward. But I don't want this to turn into what this school did and what this school didn't do. I don't want this. I don't want the meeting to be about individual schools and where somebody is and where somebody isn't. So we will be we will be presenting on the district performance report and also what measures we will be taking moving forward as a district. Are you done? You have any more? You have any more? I don't know if it's new business, old business, or any business. Uh, what is business. What is, we have not heard about soft quarters in a while. What is our current number on soft quarters? Do you have that? I, uh, not, not on. <laughs> I don't have it on me. But what, what I, well, yeah. But what I will tell you is that we did have a meeting yesterday. We started to. Now we're getting to the point where we just finished kindergarten enrollment for the most part. Um, where I'd say 90% done with that. Say a mark that's done. Uh, I, 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 I put it on. I'm I'm the only person that knows doesn't know how to shut his phone off. The only person I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we did You're have our meeting. <laughs> you and Joe. We did have our meeting yesterday, and uh, it was a very positive meeting. What we do now is we start meeting on a regular basis, probably, you know, monthly at this point, and then as we get closer to the summer, every two weeks, every week, and then we're talking on a daily basis about where we're at. It's definitely very premature to have this conversation, but what I will tell you is how, as Natalie said, that I was giddy in the meeting, because I was very happy about our numbers and what it's looking like now moving forward. Not saying that we're out of the woods or it solves all the problems, it's very premature, it's only March, but we are starting to take a look at it, so it's a little too premature for me to report out on it, but I know that that is coming. But I'll let you know that we're looking at it. Right, I bring this up because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we set a time limit of two years to revise or actually to revisit the policy and whether we were going to change it or not. And I believe the two years is up. It's in July. But up this July. But yeah. actually, I would have to check on that because I think. No, we, it's, it's, it's it is July. July. I know because I thought last year we were talking, but it is July. Yes, we are going to be looking. So I, I, mm -hmm. I yeah, just no. wanted to, because yes. you were not here at that now, time. We just updated the policy. Did it take the sunset? Mm -hmm. 
side of town and that side of town. We're one community. No, I, Emily, you can shake your head. It's out there. We're one community. They're all good schools. And if people look at the test scores after they see the conference report, why they are what they are, they'll understand it a little better before they make comments, okay? Because there are reasons why some schools are lower. Because next year, that same school could be higher than another school that was higher than them this. When I first got onto the board, I used to say, why does our test scores go down? And Mr. Watson said to me, Every year they change the test, they do this. He gave me all these variables that happened, and I realized that's why it was. And I saw the difference. So that's all. We just want to keep it as a district. Go ahead, welcome, Les, to come. I, I mean this with all due respect. Um, if there's one child whose needs are not being met, I don't care what part of the town they are. It could be on the other side of the town. They could be on... on at the Heights neighborhood, there could be a Bradford, there could be a TJ Mills, Linkris, Forest. We have to do what we have to do to make sure the needs of that child are met. And it's the job of the administration to identify the problem and make the recommendations for the solutions. We don't run the school, the administration runs the school. But it's our job as elected officials, representatives of the community, to make sure uh, things are being done and every child is being served. I'm not saying that 
that every child is not being served. Okay? But um, I do I do echo some of the sentiments of, <coughs> and I understand what what you, Mr. Norser, is saying. Also, we have to see this uh, the whole picture. Okay. Uh, but where there's a child whose needs are not being met, we have to do whatever it takes as a district, as parents, <coughs> as a community, to make sure that we are not nickel and diving our children. Okay? Because, you know, I could be very conservative with money, but when it comes to our children, I'm not going to nickel and dime our kids. If our kids need something, they need to get it, and we need to find the money to get it. Okay? So we should not have to choose one over the other All right. well, we're gonna when it you. comes to uh, that kind of discussion. Right. Because, you know, um, everybody wants uh, the best for the children. You all right? Okay? I'm fine trying to knock myself out. <laughs> all right. That's, that's it for the business. Uh, there's nothing else, so I need a, uh, excuse me, uh, I need a motion. Oh, uh, can I just say that the, the education meeting the education meeting is going to be right before the work session, uh, Monday the 21st, 22nd, 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 all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody on the finance committee, please stay. I have to go to the first couple. Please stay. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Appreciate it. Yeah, that was a good idea.